Was sexism or harassment ever an issue for you? And if so, how did you deal with it? And what would you say to other women if it happens to them? Another great question. I think the worst sexism has been in my own view of myself because I grew up in the 50s and this is right when Simone de Beauvoir had written her book and it was before women's liberation and I had very low aspirations for myself. When I was 12 years old I poured my heart out and wrote a letter to the world which I hid inside the wall of my home and the letter said, Dear world, hello my name is Alex Reed and I I love Monday because I love to go to school. I hope and pray someday I will marry a man who loves me. We will have children. Three is a good number. Well, that's it, world. I was 12 oh. years old. And by now, 12-year-old girls have, they're going to be astronauts. You still have that but letter? All I, yes, I do. I found <laughs> it the other day. But that's why I know it by heart. But, uh, you know, it's, and I had women of accomplishment in my family. My mother, my grandmother's all librarians. I had an aunt who got a PhD in 1905 from the University of Berlin. But my aspirations for myself were very low. They graduated, I want to marry Prince Charles. Thank goodness I didn't. <laughs> so what changed then, in you? What? what what changed in me, I think, was education. I went to Bennington College. I was going to be, I was just going to be, well, I shouldn't say just, but all my thought was I was going to, into the performing arts. I'm going to be an actress. That was something females did in my mind. But literature became a calling. I studied comparative literature. I went all the way with that, with a five-year program uh, at, at, at Princeton University, studying all these different languages in the med medieval period. But then there were no jobs. So I had to start all, all over again. And I began to study business at Loyola. At then it was called a college. Now, ever since I've been there, it's become a university, Loyola University in, in Maryland. And so what changed in me was I think learning, education, seeing what's out there in the world for myself and seeing how other professors and projects would respond to me, I began to gain confidence as I hadn't really growing up public school system in, in Virginia. And then I began to claim the examples of my ancestors and of my own mother and father. And during this period when you were exploring and finding yourself, did any of these people become role models for you? Oh, what a good question, role models. In terms of, I would say the women in my early work years, there were women in corporate governance who were on boards of directors and leading audit committees and leading boards of directors. And Jean Head Cisco, for example, was a, was a luminary in the world of governance. And so I saw people like Jean Head Cisco, uh, Barbara Franklin, Aretha Clark King and others thrive as women and they became role models for me. In terms of harassment, I never really had it. So I have no war stories on that score. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> what, a, what a breath of fresh air, right? <laughs>